Hello, beautiful people. I hope you're having a wonderful day. Today, I wanna touch on resin 3D printed mold. I wanna touch on this specifically because I would say in the last six months, I've been primarily focusing on FDM filament based molds. I always get the question like, okay, why do you use filament? Why do you use resin? And it really is just preference. I love FDM 3D printed molds when I'm doing things that are bigger, larger, less detail. It is easier, it costs less, and there is less room for failure. When you go into the resin territory, there is a lot more chances of failure because you have to take into consideration your support structures and setting up your file. I would say from my experience, it is trickier, it is messier. So you have to wear gloves, you have to wear your mask, you have to have adequate airflow. So it is quite different than filament, but you are gaining that very sharp and crisp detail. That's pretty much the number one reason why I love to use it, but I haven't done it in a while, so I'm gonna show you the process. And if you're looking to get started, I'm gonna show you all the materials that you'll need. I would say the number one struggle that I had when I started resin 3D printing was leveling the build plate. The old way of doing it was very tricky. You had to get it spot on and a lot of people struggled with that. I know this because I worked in the 3D printing industry. I worked with a lot of resin printers and a lot of people struggled to level the build plate. That's over with, no one has to struggle with that anymore. It's amazing because now the printers are so plug and play. You literally just fill it up with resin. All the sensors determine any cured resin bits that might lead to a failure. It will indicate whether you have enough resin in the tank and it will level out everything for you so you literally don't have to do anything. The cool thing about the Mars 5 Ultra is that it also has a camera in it so it does make a little time-lapse video for you. I personally love it. It's a really cool feature. The design that I printed out today is this soap model. This was actually created from a drawing in Procreate and extruded into a design on a soap mold. I love this. I can't wait to start making soaps. Love the simplicity and the detail that the resin printer was able to capture. The one thing about the actual print itself is that there are some bumps where the support structures were. I specifically positioned it on the build plate so that all the support structures were on the back of the print as well as the bottom. So I didn't get any disruptions on the actual design here. But like I said in my last video, I did reach out to my followers on Instagram and I asked what sandpaper routine do you guys use to clean up your resin prints? And I got so many different answers. I had to narrow it down a little, so I decided to try a couple different variations. Hopefully this routine works. If not, I am definitely willing to experiment and even make a full length video on this topic. I actually got this from Home Depot and this is a reusable sanding block. I got this specifically 400 grit micro fine and this is for the finishing touches the block itself the sanding block actually comes with a 80 grit a 120 grit and a 220 grit so after you take your model off of the build plate you gotta wash your 3d print you're gonna have a lot of residual resin on your print and you're not gonna want to rinse that with water you're not gonna want to try to wipe it off you're gonna wanna put it in a isopropyl bath where all the extra resin comes off and you can prep it for the curing process so that at that point, you can actually touch it with your hands. I'm gonna show you a couple options that I think is best. And one of them is a kind of dual wash and cure set. A lot of brands sell it. I personally got the Elugu brand. It works very well and it was definitely affordable, but you can try an ultrasonic cleaner. You can try many different things. I personally never tried an ultrasonic cleaner, but I have one today. So we're gonna unbox it and try it out and see how it works. Guys, I am loving this Philips Iris light. It's so good. 
And I actually just took a reel of the mold that I made from last week, the bow mold. I kind of matched the colors with the mold and the soaps that I made. So it was really cool. Uh, I'll show you guys how it looks like, but like you can just tune into any vibe that you're feeling. You can change it. I just want a bunch of these in the studio so I can have like a ton of colors. But for now, I'm just gonna stick with one. And I think in a few months I'll, you know, get another and add to my collection. Okay, so this is what the box looks like. It's the Sunlu Ultrasonic Cleaner. Oh, this is what it formally looks like. From first glance, it's very nice. It is a decent size. It's definitely not gonna fit prints from my Jupiter, but that's okay. Here's the inside, super spacious. It's actually a little more spacious than I thought it would be. It has a little screen here with a dial. We have the green light here. Hey guys, I wanted to take a little breather and do some research because I was reading the user guide and it was suggesting not to put alcohol in this machine. And it got me a little bit kind of thrown off because I thought this was for washing my resin prints. I actually watched another video with a, another creator on YouTube reviewing this machine. He used a, a bag, like a rubbery reusable bag like this. I actually just found this at the dollar store. Uh, he put alcohol the 99% alcohol inside the bag with the 3D print and then ran the ultrasonic cleaner for like 10 minutes while having water in the vat. And honestly, that is a better idea. You still have to exercise some caution because alcohol is flammable and we're using a very high percentage. So we're gonna give it a test. I have the bag, I'm gonna put a little alcohol in there. Luckily, our print is not too large, so we'll be able to take it off the bill plate and use the machine and see how it works. I have my 99% alcohol in my little baggie. I'll show you guys the results, let you know if this is a better option or the wash and cure set is better. All right, let's turn this on. I love that little green illumination. We got our little bag. I'm gonna open it up. I'm probably gonna pour the rest of this alcohol in. All right, so I put the rest of the bottle in the bag. So you can see there are a little bit of particles in there. I've used this alcohol before. I'm gonna take our little print, throw it in there. Give it a good swish, close up the bag. I do love this idea as well because it's not gonna make the cleaner get all yucky. Cause you know, like resin residue gets so disgusting. Give it a good shake. Looks like we still have some room for some water. I'm gonna pour some in. And in terms of timing, I don't wanna go over the top. So maybe we'll do six minutes. We'll try for that. I actually forgot that you can put it on different modes. There's one, two, and three. Three is obviously the most powerful, so we're gonna give that a go. So one thing about the actual print itself is that it feels really, really clean. Sometimes I don't even get this result from washing it for 15 minutes in the washing station. It feels really, really good. So it's gonna air dry, we're gonna cure it, sand it down, prep it for molding, and then I'll show you guys the final product.